Namaskar from Desh Sanchar's Diplomatic Eye. I am Mitra Bandhu Paurel. If this is your first time watching Diplomatic Eye, I would like to let you know that all of the episodes are accessible on both Desh Sanchar's official English page and YouTube channel. This program's objective is to provide an analytical stance on a current subject involving diplomacy, foreign policy and international relations. Today I will speak about Nepal's Prime Minister's travel to China as well as the contents and weaknesses of the joint declarations. Ladies and gentlemen, let us begin the 10th episode uh, which is titled uh, The Visit of Nepal's Prime Minister to China and Shortcomings in the Joint Communique. From September 23 to September 30, 2023, Nepal's Prime Minister Pushpakamal Dahal Prachanda paid an official visit to China. While there, he attended the opening ceremony of 19th Asian Games. He had earlier attended the United Nations General Assembly's 78th session in New York, USA. With the exception of his efforts to advance his own and his party's brand, observers uh, do not seem overly enthusiastic about the PM's tour to China for the sake of the country. High-level visits, purpose and perception. China and Nepal have had uh, increased bilateral interactions over the past few months. However, we must closely monitor how things develop. Visits by high-ranking U.S. dignitaries there were discussions with the Chinese officials as well. Victoria Nulal, the Deputy Secretary of State for Political Affairs of the United States, who paid two-day visit to Kathmandu on January 29 and 30 this year, is a senior U.S. diplomat. The Director of U.S. Aid, Samantha Power, met with key authorities while in Kathmandu for a two-day visit shortly after her departure. In honor of the MCC Nepal Compact successful launch, CEO Alice Albright came to Kathmandu on 1st October 2023 for a five-day visit. The Deputy Assistant Secretary for South and Central Asian Affairs, Afrin Akhtar, also recently traveled to Kathmandu. Prior to February 17, 2023, Indian Foreign Secretary Binay Mohan Quatra returned home after spending two days in Nepal. It is also said that U.S. representatives questioned Nepal's decision to not take part in the State Partnership Program, SPP, during a number of sessions. The previous Sherbahadur Deva administration had rejected the SPP, which is thought to be a part of a security and military alliance. China doesn't seem to be comfortable when Nepal Army Chief General Prabhu Ram Sarma attended the conference of the Indo-Pacific Army Chiefs in New Delhi, a three-day event held by the Indian Army with the U.S. Army as a co-host concluded on September 27 in New Delhi. 30 countries took part in the event. 18 countries were represented by chiefs of armies while 12 countries were represented by heads of delegation. Now let's talk on PM's visit to China. Was it geopolitical or economy oriented? I believe that the Prime Minister's visit to China was intended to serve geopolitical as well as economic purposes. China is closely monitoring uh, what the United States and India are doing in Nepal. Because of Nepal's strategic location, and the US and India's membership in the Quad, China appears to be more concerned about the travel of its top officials here. Given Nepal's participation in China's Belt and Road Initiatives, BRI, and its proximity to China, I believe it is also driven by economic considerations. The BRI framework was signed by Nepal, however, not a single project has moved forward. China is curious to understand more about the unique problems that exist uh, in this circumstance. Authorities and experts claim that Beijing is concerned uh, that third parties would damage bilateral relations. Beijing speculated that the U.S. 
and India might be the third parties despite the fact that it did not specify who they were. With Chinese President Xi Jinping, the Prime Minister hardly had time for bilateral discussions since it lasted only for 20 minutes. Now, why did he stay in China for 8 days? One diplomat claimed that he conveyed the idea that it was more of a personal vacation than an official one. Let us talk about Chinese confusion. It is believed that the Chinese were curious in the new communist front and wanted to know how it would evolve and what impact it would have on Nepali politics. These parties do not follow either their manifesto or their values. Their senior official self-serving goals complicated the unity. Perhaps China does not uh, comprehend the dynamics of this situation. Besides, China wants to have equal interest and influence in Nepal vis-a-vis -vis India. Once more, let us talk about the Prime Minister trip to China. On September 26, a joint statement with 13 points was released. On the joint communique, I would like to offer some commentary. What does the joint statement contain? Number 1. The first three points should be in the background information of the joint statement. The communique included the felicitatory words, municipal elections were held on May 13, 2022. Members of the House of Representatives and the Province Assembly were chosen at the same time on November 20, 2022. Even the coalition has already shifted under PM Prachanda. One feels uneasy about these ordeal events being mentioned in the communique. Number two, the fourth point referred to President Xi Jinping's historic state visit to Nepal in 2019, during which the bilateral relationship was raised to a strategic partnership of cooperation with the everlasting friendship for development and prosperity. Number three, as far as point number five is concerned, it is all fine, but lacks precise information on BRI, the causes of the delay and the timeline for implementing 8 projects of BRI. Regarding BRI implementation, the communique appeared to be almost mute. Number 4. Point 6 is basically recognizes the history of mutual assistance in difficult times. The two parties reaffirmed their commitment to respecting and accommodating each other's concerns and basic interests. Nepal's adherence to the principle of one China has been reinformed. Number 5. Point number 7 states that Nepal and China have agreed to accelerate consultations on the Belt and Road Initiative implementation plan, exchange development strategies and strengthen connectivity in areas like ports, roads and railways. They will also work together to ensure safety and contribute to Nepal's development agenda including graduating from the least developed country status. The communique highlights that both countries are committed to delivering greater benefits to their people. It further states that Chinese and Nepali sites have agreed to improve port facilities, reopen trade points and maintain communication for uh, Chentang Kimathanka and Ryu Olangchangula ports. They will accelerate feasibility studies for the Tokha Chare tunnel and Kathmandu ring road projects, expand air rights arrangements, and promote energy cooperation. The China Nepal joint implementation mechanism will be used for exchanges. It is unclear when BRI projects will begin. Signing the BRI framework agreement in 2017 but failing to build a single project since then demonstrates our lack of sincerity. Nepal should toss away its begging ball. Number 6. Point number 8 mentioned that both sides agreed to enhance cooperation in various sectors including economy, trade, investment, agriculture, tourism, poverty, elevation, health and education, expressing satisfaction with the existing bilateral cooperation. The Chinese and Nepali governments are pleased with the recent second working group meeting on trade 
facilitation in China pledging to provide a fair, transparent and non-discriminatory business environment. It is stated that the first batch of transit cargo arrived in Nepal on September 7, 2023 further. It added that Nepal's participation in the 7th China South Asia Expo and 6th China International Import Expo in Shanghai will further boost economic and trade cooperation. Although this is positive, there is no reason for a big celebration for the cargo arrival. The cargo mentioned in the joint statement is more of a metaphor than a tangible accomplishment. If not for daily operations, this must be in use on a regular basis. There is a lot of ambiguity in the language regarding the trade and payment agreement. We also anticipate some real financial advantage from the fair plan from November 23, 2023. Agriculture Industrial Demonstration Park as a concept sounds promising. How far along is Nepal with this preparation? Are there any well-informed discussions occurring? As a step towards eliminating economic imbalances between the two nations, Nepal and China stated their willingness to expedite the clearance procedure for the export of cooked buffalo meat products from Nepal to China. Yes, this is a worthwhile endeavor. It ought not to be an uncommon rhetoric. To lessen the trade imbalance, however, this will not be sufficient on its own. What steps are being taken to set up the necessary infrastructure including advanced laboratories? China and Nepal have decided to work together to develop standardized uh, scale farming methods for yak, neck and mountain goats. The lighting up of the future initiatives and the vibrant village demonstration project were both warmly embraced. They expressed a willingness to increase collaboration in the area of development, improving livelihood and reviving rural areas. They praised one another's assistance in the fight against COVID-19 and express joy at the conclusion of a project with Chinese assistance. In order to support Madan Bhandari University for science and technology, they are also looking at combined educational techniques. Number 7. The assertion made in point number 9 is that the Nepali side recognized Chinese uh, significant contribution to the economic and social advancement of Nepal. The two sides agreed that the implementation of the pre-planned reconstruction projects for the earthquakes aftermath needed to be accelerated up. Number 8. The subsequent point indicates that to improve border uh, management and collaboration, the two sides decided to carry out joint inspection of the China-Nepal border, put into effect the agreement on the boundary management system and continue discussions on the establishment of a three-level boundary contact system. The location of the border dispute between Nepal and China is not made clear in this. In the demarcation of the Nepal-China uh, border, the Nepali government has not specifically identified the locations of the disputed border areas. Number 9. In reference to point number 11, it is said that Nepal and China have agreed to discuss cooperation in the digital economy, infrastructure and artificial intelligence as they express satisfaction with the agreement they signed on cooperation in areas like education, science and technology, telecommunication, culture, tourism, radio, television and youth. The government of China and Nepal have committed to advance cordial relations and collaboration which uh, includes assisting Nepal's cultural and tourism organizations, planning tourism related events and enticing Chinese vis visitors to Nepal. A memorandum of understanding on the publication and translation of classics was also signed. Number 10. In accordance uh, with point number 12, the significance of multilateralism, democracy and fair global governance was emphasized by both parties. They also decided to reject protectionism, promote the 
multilateral trading system and set up their cooperation inside the UN. They sought to advance harmony, safety, progress, wealth and a shared future. In Nepal, the issue of governance is severe. What does greater democracy entail exactly? The joint statement does not make it explicitly evident. Number 11. The communique's last point is that Nepal and China have advanced their strategic partnership of cooperation expressing satisfaction with the result of Prime Minister Prachanda's visit to China. Both sides extended an invitation to Chinese leaders to visit Nepal and will continue to communicate through diplomatic channels. This is nothing more than praise for the visit to China by the Prime Minister of Nepal. Will this just remain a formality or can we expect solid action from both sides? Conclusion We need to cautiously wait and see how both countries take initiatives to implement letter and spirit of the joint statement. In short, this visit did not uh, establish the foundation necessary to advance the BRI projects that have stalled. The message that there was no concern in Nepal was conveyed by the Prime Ministers and high level officials needlessly extended stay in China. Big initiatives are not recommended given the current status of the economy of Nepal. However, if China is willing to provide financial support for railways, Nepal should grab the opportunity. Along with Nepal, India will benefit from Nepal's railway connectivity to China. With regard to long-term commerce, Nepal's proximity to two powerful countries may be economically advantageous uh, to all three countries. If BRI in Nepal concentrates on home demand and interest, it has a promising future. It is necessary to conduct a thorough evaluation before to starting a project. The point is Nepal cannot rely on China too much. China undoubtedly uh, needs to comprehend it correctly too. Due to its challenging topography, language barriers and cultural disparities, Nepal is unable to engage in significant bilateral trade with China based on reciprocity. However, experts believe that China has replaced India as the most significant participant in Nepal's investment and development sectors as well as a major player in its domestic politics between the profound changes that began in 2006 and the present. For Nepal, it is necessary to exercise more prudence when accepting loans from any countries including China. It is best to choose projects that can be successfully commercialized. I don't believe that aid will aid Nepal's development since it has long received foreign aid uh, if this were the case. It would have been one of the world's most developed countries. Before winding up, I would like to conclude with a special mention on the BRI. The BRI project has been so much talked about for the past six years. However, no solid actions have been taken from both sides. Will the BRI just end up within its conceptual framework in Nepal or will both the sides finally start working out seriously on this highly elongated project? It is uh, for the concerned authorities to decide. All projects ought to have money from Nepal's end. You will benefit from the pride of ownership that comes with it. Necessary to get rid of the begging ball for economic and moral dignity of the country. Let me now draw a conclusion to this episode. I appreciate you taking time to watch me. I will come up with a new episode about a current subject. Once more, I want to say thank you.